Brought to you by Amon Auctions, the worldwide leader in antique tractor auctions. It's a snowy day in northern Indiana, and the Redding family's 1970 John Deere 120 is hard at work. Although this tractor is several decades old, it has no problem handling the snow. The 120 was Deere's attempt to offer customers a price break in a hydrostatic tractor. The company took their highly successful 140 and stripped it down in order to reduce the cost. It only had a 12 horse engine compared to the 14. It only had a single brake, single hydraulics. That was John Deere's way of being able to cut a lot of the cost off the price of the machine. However, the 120 never caught on with consumers and Deere discontinued production of the tractor after just two years. John Deere apparently felt that the, uh, the 12 horsepower hydrostat tractor, the sales was not good enough. Presumably anybody that was going to buy a hydrostat tractor uh, was going to go with the 140 that had a few more frills. The 120 back in the day was probably not as well received as what John Deere had hoped from a marketing and retail standpoint. It's probably more popular today uh, in the collector's world because it's, it was only a two year run tractor. So a lot of the collectors are going for that type of tractor, the low production numbers. Although a 12 horse engine may not have been what customers were looking for, the hydrostatic transmission was something they could appreciate. A single lever on the right side of the steering wheel allowed changes of speed between forward and reverse without clutching or shifting. Hydrostat drive is an infinite range of speed forward and reverse. It gives you the capability of going faster or slower without using a clutch uh, compared to the gearbox tractors that John Deere was best known for from the beginning. You only have a certain range in a gear drive tractor. This you can go from zero to maximum in just the push of a lever. That's one of the uniquest uh, features about the tractor. The blade that the Reddings are using to push the snow is also a classic, although it's not exactly made for this model of tractor. The blade on this tractor actually um, is off of a 200 series tractor that we had converted um, because we were needing, back a few years ago, we were needing a little bit smaller blade, actually width-wise, to do a couple of little local uh, snow removal jobs. The blade on this machine actually, uh, for the die-hard John Deere people that know their attachments and, and things like that, will notice that it's actually incorrect for the tractor. We thought it would be a nice piece to just kind of clean up, uh, do a little restoration work to it, put the new decals on it, and just be able to show it and for an added attachment to this tractor. And we've gotten some pretty good response from it. People like the actual thought of the smaller blade on that tractor. Darren and Mark's interest in John Deere goes beyond just garden tractors. They collect anything and everything the company made. In addition to the 120, the Reddings still have the 1959 John Deere 630 that was the first tractor they restored. Darren and Mark are also quite proud of their collection of John Deere patio tractors, complete sets featuring all the available colors. No matter how many rare and unique tractors they find and restore, the 120 is always going to have a special place in their collection. I think the uh, 120 um, behind me is probably my dad and I's, one of our favorite tractors right now because it's one of the latest restorations that we've done and it probably draws as much attention as any of them that we display. Our likes and dislikes changes as time goes on, but the 120 draws a large uh, amount of attention. And uh, I think maybe a lot of it too is the attention to detail that we put into it, uh, along with it being a 120 and kind of a rare tractor. The 120 is a very unique experience, uh, especially if you're at shows when you're loading or unloading and driving around or whatever, uh, you have a lot of people stopping, turning around, looking at, at you and your machine because most people th that are at garden tractor shows or big tractor shows, whatever, they're there because they know and they like to see good equipment. They know the 120 is a relatively rare machine. The Redding family's obsession with John Deere goes back to when Mark was a teenager. His first job out of high school was with a Deere dealership. That started a lifelong love affair with all things green and yellow.
I was only a 17 year old kid. And, uh, but anyway, that's when I kind of became uh, what you call, I bleed green, because John Deere became a very instrumental part in my life. That's how I got started with John Deere, and it has grown since that day when I graduated from high school uh, in 1963. John Deere is a very key factor in my life. A lot of people say I'm crazy, but uh, it has been very, very rewarding for me and my son. It was just a natural thing for me to be born into John Deere Green and Yellow. Uh, my mom always tells me that the first thing that I got when I was first born was a toy tractor that was John Deere. So I think the first thing that I ever seen when I opened my eyes was John Deere Green and Yellow. John Deere's been in my blood since day one. Mark and Darren say their classic tractor fever has brought father and son closer together. Darren and I uh, were best friends, even though we're father and son, but uh, a lot of people are, are envious of what we have because some of the collectors, they don't have somebody to carry on with a passion that they thoroughly love. And, I, and I'm honored. The good Lord has been with, uh, with me and blessed me because he's given me Darren that has, he enjoys the same thing I do. The good thing about uh, classic tractor fever is that my dad and I enjoy being together and doing it as a father and son and as partners. And um, since we're both sick with this illness, I, I don't see any reason to give up now.